Hello students, today we're going to be disassembling a nose gear oleo strut on a Cessna 150. I have raised the nose gear off the ground by pushing down on the tail. I've placed cases of oil on the horizontal stabilizer. Always depressurize any landing gear strut before removal or disassembly. When the nose gear strut is compressed, it's able to turn left and right. We have a centering block on the upper torque link, and when the airplane lifts off the ground and is in the air, the strut will extend, and the nose gear centering lock will hold the nose gear straight ahead. Remove the nose gear steering rods. Remove the lower strut attach bolt. Punch out the upper strut attach point roll pin. Remove the nose tire to give yourself more room and then rock the strut left and right to slide it out. remove the fluid out of the oleo strut, you aim it in the bucket and then pump it back and forth. I've already drained this earlier. Remove the torque links. Remove the chimney dampener. To remove the strut barrel and collar assembly with the O-rings, we need to remove the snap ring. To slide the nose gear fork out, work it like a slide hammer. Remove the snap ring that holds the steering collar. The steering collar has shims to take up the slack. Remove the snap ring that holds the upper bearing. Remove the O-ring collar. Remove the nose fork attach bolts. Use your calibrated aviation precision broom handle. When the airplane comes in for landing, all the fluid on this side of the strut will have to come up to this side. 
And so as the airplane comes down, the only place for the fluid to go is between the metering rod and the orifice. So that fluid exchange, fluid transfer is what actually causes the dampening. Here we have the inner tube and the nose gear fork assembly. Inside that is a base plug and a metering rod. I have spent hours cleaning and polishing all these parts so I have a clean reassembly. I've installed the O-rings and if you want to deburr the sharp edges on the inside of the tube, take a small rotary file, a little kind, little diamond file with a ball on the end of it, and put it in there and spin it with a high-speed drill and then wallow it around and, and pull out on and you can just catch in the edge of that ball. And if you do it just right, you can do a real nice job of deburring the inside of that hole with a small ball-shaped rotary file. Sometimes I've taken larger balls and put them in the opposite way with the, with the stem sticking out there, you know, with a large ball and pulled it out and uh, spun it and deburred a hole that way. So many ways of doing it. And you could do it by hand if you have sandpaper, but do clean out everything and polish it. I polish this with a hone, a homemade hone, just a coat hanger with some sandpaper and scotch bright pads wrapped around it and I spun it on a drill, cleaned it and polished it, and uh, then I used a rag and uh, metal polish to clean it to a smooth uh, surface. Now I can install the base plug and metering pin. So I'll line the holes and I've lubricated the O-rings with silicone grease or hydraulic fluid and Line up the holes best you can and push squarely. Sometimes a little bit of a rotation really helps. Yeah, I rotate a little tiny bit and it slid right in. And very carefully go past the first set of holes. And I could look through the side here to make sure I'm not shaving off a little piece of an O-ring. Since I deburred the holes real well, this should be good. Continue in. I could see it's a little farther now, almost get the holes lined up. And then if you take a tapered punch and put it in there, you can line the holes right up. And now I can install the, the two bolts. Anytime you see that you don't have the holes lined up and you need to twist it, just put a wrench on the nut, and then you can take the wrench and give it a twist, and you can turn it around so the holes line up. Install the inner tube to fork bolts. This one here is for the tow bar to attach to, and this bolt here holds the tube to the fork, and it also is for the wheel fairing. We will now install the lock ring and the retainer. The retainer has a bevel on it. So when the lock ring locks it in place, any force outward will wedge the lock ring deeper into its groove. If you put it on the wrong way, it won't hold it. It could fly apart and it also usually doesn't fit. So remember, the wedge on the retainer is to push the lock ring outwards when there's pressure inside the strut. Here we have the ring pack support. At the bottom of the ring pack support is a scraper ring. And its job is to keep the chrome plated portion clean so that way every time it slides there's no dirt on it to damage the o-rings inside inside here you have a large o-ring with two backup rings each backup ring has a concave side and a flat side these backup rings are made to comfortably house the o-ring 
So both concave sides go right towards the O-ring, which fits right in the center here. I have lubricated the ring pack support, and now I can install the backup rings and the O-ring. I distort them a little bit and put them inside. Make sure you have both concave sides facing one another. There's one. I'll install the other concave side, goes, goes towards the inner O-ring. Put that one in. And then you're going to have a gap in between there. And so then you could take your lubricated O-ring, put that inside and work that around. And you have that installed. You have another O-ring which goes on the outside right here. Now it's ready to assemble. First of all, your scraper goes on. Now I can install the ring pack support. I've polished the holes so that way there's no way I will damage any O-rings during the assembly. Put on my scraper ring. I've made a little tiny wedge of lubricant here, so now I can install the ring pack support. And put it on the end, and you're gonna have to hold it squarely and rotating it a little bit. By rotating it and holding it squarely, you get to sli it'll slide right on, right in place. And so the buildup goes something like this, this little scraper. And the retainer is held in there, and then there's a snap ring. Here we have the upper bearing and the lock ring. The upper bearing has a chamfer in it, so that way when it pushes outward, it forces the lock ring deeper into its groove. I've cleaned and polished the strut tube. I've polished where the O-ring seats. I've also chamfered the holes so I don't slice any O-rings on the other side. It's lubricated and now I can assemble it. Rotating it is very helpful. So try to give it a twist. Oh, I got it. A little more twist and there. Now, many times you need to push it in all the way and it's hard to get your fingers in there. So what I do, I just put a punch right there and then I'll push in on it and I can push it all the way down. That way I push it down to the bottom of its position. Ensure that the scraper is seated all the way to the bottom. Drop the ring pack retainer into position, then install the lock ring. Place the gap a little bit off from the removal hole. The lock ring is not installed completely. To get the lock ring installed completely, pry outward in it and snap it into the position.
when it's fully seated, there'll be a decent sized gap at the ends of this clip. Install the O-ring on the piston assembly with the orifice. And now we're going to install it. Sometimes it needs to be turned one way and other times it needs to be turned the other. Check on your aircraft and see which one gives you the most room. Whichever way is, works best for you on your airplane. Now rotate as you turn, as you push. There it goes. I can see that I'm not going to slice any O-rings because I've polished them nice and smooth. And look at that. I've got the holes lined up. You can always use a tapered punch to line them up the rest of the way. Here is our steering arm. Under it, we have shims which take up any slack. On top is a retainer ring. Let's install them. The steering arm is what limits the turning left to right. And now we'll install the retainer ring. This is called a stop plug. It has two purposes. One purpose is to center the nose gear when the airplane is in the air. That way, every time you come in for a landing, the nose gear will be straight. If you didn't have that, you may be working the rudders back and forth and the nose gear could be crooked. And then if it's crooked and you come in for a landing, things are gonna wanna run off the runway. So you always want your nose gear to be straight ahead when you come in for a landing. Hopefully you're doing a good landing. Now another, another um, reason for the, for the stop lug is it limits the travel of the strut. This strut cannot go any farther in extension because of the stop lug. Now some airplanes have a measurement on some retractable gear airplanes and you have to get it just right so that way all the lock mechanisms fit and it locks in a retractable gear airplane and it fits in the wheel well properly. So if, if you had a retractable gear airplane and your nose strut is extended too far and is crooked the sides, it's very likely to jam up in the wheel well. And when you come in for a landing, that wheel's not coming down. The torque links have spacers inside. The spacers are designed to fit tightly. When the bolt is tightened down, the spacer is pinched tight and should not move. The torque link with its bushings should be free to rotate. If there's any side play, they make shims to take up the slack. Torque the bolt to pinch the spacer. Align the cotter pin hole and make sure the torque link is free to move without any slack. You may need additional spacers. Install as many shims as necessary to eliminate any free play.
on free movement with no additional free play. We've installed an additional washer to take up the slack in the center of the torque links. Make sure the torque links move, rotate it. Make sure you don't have any slack. Any slack will lead to a nose wheel shimmy. And now you're ready to install the cotter pins. I have installed all the nuts and cotter pins on the same side to make it easier for a pre-flight inspection. Normally I'd install the shimmy dampener now but we're going to get that in the next video. So we'll leave it off for now and we'll put the strut on the airplane. There are rigging procedures for the nose gear, the rudder pedals, and the steering assembly. These have to be set to a prescribed distance. The nose gear steering rods and bungees have to be adjusted properly. The rudder pedals have to be in the right position. A, a there's a specific dimension away from the firewall, and the rudder has to be straight. So this is just the beginning. When, it, when you're up in the air, the nose gear straightens out, the steering rods need to be straight, the pedals have to be straight, and the rudder has to be straight. So we have to line everything from here all the way to the back of the airplane. We will get that in another video. This is an air oil strut, and I've purposely filled it with air only. I've used a regular tire inflator on the top valve, and see how it behaves with only air and no oil. If you ever see a strut behaving in that manner, you know that all the oil is leaked out and you have air alone.
doesn't do a very good job of dampening it just slams all the way down full travel and it'll be a rough ride when you come in for a landing That nose gear strut is looking mighty thirsty. Uh, struts like to drink 5606 hydraulic fluid. And uh, so the way you fill them up is to let them drink it in. I'll show you how to do that.
Well, I'd say that strut drank itself full of fluid, and now I'll remove the uh, the uh, the rubber hose from the top of the strut. So you go up and down, fill it with fluid until you work out all the air bubbles, and then you compress the strut completely. So and right now the strut is filled all the way to the top in the compressed position. So I'm going to undo the hose. Now that the strut is completely full of fluid, I'm going to fill it with air. This book says 20 PSI is all it needs. So I'm just gonna hit it with the air hose and then I'll get a pressure gauge and adjust it to 20 pounds. I can hear it putting air in there and then I'll get my pressure gauge. Well, I've set the plane back down on the ground, and I think I'll bounce a nose and kick a strut a few times, see how it works. I still have to put on the valve cap. I need to safety wire the roll pin on top. I need to finish up the axle, but I'll bounce it around, see how it works. Well, I think that strut works just the way it's supposed to work. I think this repair job, a resealing job, and cleaning it all up has worked great. So thank you for watching.